Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Visual Narrative and Rizzo Lab info session. Uh, my name is Pan. I'll be your host for the evening. I'm going to talk. We're going to, we have a, a suite of classes we're going to be sharing with you tonight. Um, I'll be talking a little bit about the Rizzo Lab. If you guys could just mute your um, phone, your uh, speakers. Um, so, in the past, you know, of course, these sessions have been in person, but, um, you know, we, uh, we've we been doing this online since, basically since we forced online during the pandemic. Um, and the, the, one of the benefits of this is that, you know, we'll be able to, um, you know, we can kind of expand our range. Um, and some of you might be logging on from the New York area. Some of you might be logging on from across the country. Um, we've got both online and in-person classes to present. And also, this is only uh, half of the classes we're presenting tonight. The other half we're going to be presenting uh, in a session this Thursday night, which I think some of you um, also signed up for. So um, I'll try to uh, I'll try to adjust my my intro slides so it won't be too repetitive for that today and also to kind of pressure myself. So before I get into talking a little bit about the Rezo Lab and uh, what Rezo Printing is and, and my own course, um, uh, I wanted to mention the MFA Visual Narrative Program, which is the department that we're connected to. Um, the uh, Visual Narrative Program is offers a fresh perspective and a bold alternative to traditional MFA programs. They do so by recognizing that a command of story is the most powerful and fundamental foundation that an artist in any creative profession can possess. Um, this is approached through multidisciplinary study ranging from character development with a theater director to world building and a game designer with a, ga a game designer to the foundations of visual language with experts in children's books, branding, mapping, film, and photography. They welcome students from diverse backgrounds, including those without standard art training. A bachelor's degree in any area is acceptable. This is a low residency program. During the three semester intense, uh, three summer intensive semesters at SV in the heart of New York City, students attend, attend courses supported by a network of industry and market experts. Throughout the four semesters of online study during the fall and spring semester, students are able to work remotely and travel without having to uproot their professional careers and family or change their personal lifestyles. So. This program, um, the chair of this program, Nathan Fox, is the co-founder of the visual narrative of the uh, the Rezo Lab, um, which I'll, I'll talk a little bit about in a minute. But this is, uh, as I mentioned before, it's a uh, low residency, three-year um, intensive graduate program focused on story. And the classes we're offering tonight are part of visual narratives, continuing education suite of classes. Um, the Rezo Lab is a physical, uh, sort of print facility that that was developed by myself and MFA visual narrative director Nathan Fox. And I'll, um, if you, you're interested in finding out more, I would definitely recommend checking out their website, MFA visual narrative.sva.edu, um, and emailing uh, MFA visual narrative to uh, assistant with the chair, Joe McCabe, uh, and I'll be dropping her email in the chat momentarily at MFA DN at sva.edu. Um, so without Further ado, um, I guess I usually Joan McCabe, the uh, assistant to the chair for the MFA visual, visual, uh, visual Narrative Program, is here to introduce me. Um, but you know, tonight I'm pretty much flying solo. So um, just to kind of keep it brief, my name is Panayoti Stelzis. I'm an artist, printer, and publisher. I'm the, the uh, director and co-founder of the SV Visa Lab which um, I started with Nathan Fox back in 2015. And I'm teaching a class uh, focusing on Rezo printing for zines and small publishing. Um, a little bit about the Rezo Lab. As I said before, um, we, you know, up until the spring of 2020, we were having these info sessions in person, uh, in our physical location, at 136 West 21st Street on the 11th floor of a beautiful building. And um, we sort of had to hit, hit the ground running in 2015 and let people know that we existed, um, that we had classes um, to offer and, you know, uh, sort of try to explain what a Rezo was. Because uh, at, at that time, 
you know, there's a vague understanding of, of the fact that it was some sort of a, a printing, um, you know, some sort of a, uh, a technology that had been appropriated by artists to use for printing and publishing. Um, but most people hadn't seen Ariza. So these sessions, um, attendees got a chance to hear the same presentations that we'll be giving um, online, but in person, and then had a chance to meet the instructors, ask them questions, and always got a chance to leave with a Rizzo printed goodie like this color chart here, um, we would always sneak in our course listings on the back. But of course, um, since the spring of 2020, everything sort of moved online, we had to figure out, we had to quickly pivot. And, and you know, for the Rizzo Lab as a space devoted to uh, teaching classes where the focus was on learning how to use these physical machines um, and taking either digitally or manually uh, produced artwork and render it, uh, print it in a physical medium and, and really kind of um, understand the physical form and, and do the, all this in person um, to then take this work and present it either in an exhibition or a book fair. Um, we had to figure out how does, how can we continue the energy, um, you know, that, that uh, and sort of the momentum that we had built up uh, at that point was about four years in existence, 2019, 2020, um, how could we move that online? So we launched a series of online classes called the Rizzo Lab Remote Series, um, which, you know, in retrospect, I think that really sharpened us and that really, you know, that really allowed us to have an opportunity to figure out what is it about uh, the process of teaching students and artists how to use the Rizzo process um, to make uh, to make beautifully printed and designed artwork. What is it about that that we can um, pull out that that sort of transcends the the medium itself? You know, um, and you know, and and it was kind of a really useful for myself and other instructors who taught online. We're continuing to offer these classes, um, and since our triumphant return to you know having a in person um, facility that was open to the public in 2021, we've we've actually added additional classes and additional faculty members, additional staff. We continue to expand um, and, you know, really sort of open up our, our offerings and our the possibilities. So before um, before I talk further about the Rizzo Lab itself, I guess, you know, one question that I've continuously asked myself in 13 years of using Rizzo printing as, as, as a main part of my uh, my own creative production is what is it about these machines um, that uh, that you know are both maddening and um, and absolutely sort of um, very satisfying to use, um, but also can can be incredibly frustrating when they don't do what you want them to do. What is it about these machines that, as you can tell by the the sort of the very corporate design of their website, um, their design identity that that you know has created this massive explosion of interest. Um, and has supported this kind of revival of, um, of sort of you know printing and publishing culture among among artists. And I think part of it is um, the fact that you have to operate the machine yourself. You really have to get involved in the way it works um, and the guts of the machine to, um, to to produce something that that even comes close to what you might have seen out there in terms of the um, the top of the line Rizzo work. Um, that artists were, were made by artists that are really pushing the limit. Um, it's, you know, it's also the range of colors that, that Rizzo makes and the fact that um, it's not automatic. It's not, you know, uh, it's different than sending an image to your inkjet printer where it's automatically going to take your RGB image that has millions of colors and um, render it in something that's close enough, but maybe doesn't quite hit the spot. With Rizzo printing, it really is more of a press um, secretly because the machine isn't marketed that way, but it's really a lot closer to printmaking, really using, you know, learning to use Rezo and really lear learning to use it to really unlock the, the everything we can do involves bringing it back to basics and really sort of thinking in terms of layers of color. Um, how do you take those layers and you know, use them in a smart way to make really incredible work. And here's a few examples of work made by, uh, in this case, one of our artists in residence, Natalie Anderson, who did a residency with us back in 2017, I believe maybe it was 2016, um, and has since become sort of a Rezo uh, superstar online. 
Um, here's a zine by another one of our arson residents, uh, Bjorn, um, Bjorn McDaniels. Uh, Pixie Lau, uh, a photographer who did residency with us. So you see the range of work that can be created and also thinking beyond what we're also, we're always interested in doing, doing is thinking beyond what Rizzo has been used for, you know, beyond the context of uh, these small, you know, interlocking scenes and worlds of people interested in publishing zines and artist books. Um, and um, how can you use Rizzo to scale up and make an installation or make, make uh you know make something that's more sculptural um as far as the reason lab as i mentioned before the chair of the mfa visual narrative program nathan fox um, way back in 2015 he was um you know the visual narrative program had just started and he with his background in illustration and printmaking um, and offset printing he had sort of heard about reason printing and he was interested in starting a space dedicated to this medium to offer classes and training, not just for SVA um, students, but also for the general New York City um, art world at large and all these all these you know incredibly talented, um, driven professionals that are at the top of their field. How could we pull them in and have them take classes at our space and see what, what they would do with this medium to make it available? Um, and so he was referred to me. I'd already started working with this medium and uh, he pulled me in to help start what would become the Rizzo Lab. So, from our, the fall of 2015, where we only had two classes, one employee, um, a couple of uh, very enthusiastic student workers who didn't quite know what they were doing. Um, and basically me, I was both the only instructor, I was the co-founder, I was a technician, I had to be pretty much everything. Um, we've we continued to expand and add classes, add staff, add a proper uh, team of techs to help run the space. Um, at an artist and residency, artist and residency, uh, artist and residency program, um, a set of um, you know boot camps um, for graduate students, and part of the philosophy behind the space is that we um, we're going to take a different uh, road, different path than other schools that had offered riso printing. The two models at that point um, in terms of riso printing were either uh, a you know a, a design department or an illustration department would buy a Rizzo and just drop it in a computer lab, give students a 30 minute training, and then within a week, the machine would be destroyed, right? Um, which doesn't really, this isn't really helpful to anyone except the last person that used it before it got broken. Um, the other model um, that sort of I had seen in other schools was uh, departments would buy a Rizzo and then set up a service bureau where students would basically be able to pay to get things printed, but wouldn't actually get to handle the machine and sort of run it themselves. We wanted to um, recreate the experience that I had had, and the experience that a lot of other artists who had sort of stumbled upon this medium had had, had um, where, you know, in sort of applying the principles of printmaking, lithography, um, screen printing, uh, woodblock printing, offset printing, all of these ideas, different ways to layer uh, to, you know, to, to print layers of color um, over each other to, to build up an image, um, you know, how to unlock the possibilities of the, this machine and continue to contribute to what's really been like a print revolution. Um, and, and, you know, and, and we wanted to give people the tools to, to use these machines and then sort of unleash them. So um, unleash them in, in the Rizzo Lab. So the approach has been a mix of um, a very high level of expertise and a very high level of Sort of discipline and um, you know knowledge that, that we that we require. So full semester class is required to use the Rizzo Lab, but then outside of class, printing is unlimited. So you can book printing time during during our open lab schedule, and uh, when you come to the lab and you have one of our Rizos booked from like one o'clock to four o'clock, that machine is yours. You you're running it yourself. There's technicians there in case you need to, um, you know, you run into a snag with the idea is you're self-sufficient because you've gotten really good training in class. And then you can take that knowledge and apply it to other areas of your design or art practice. Um, in future semesters, you know, former students are able to pay a lab access fee and use our space. So that's, uh, and we have, uh, we have artists who have been using our space 
pretty much since we started. There was someone who took the, one of the very first classes in 2015 who came back last summer, um, this past summer, and uh, enrolled in the open lab access option and was using the space for her own production. At the end of each semester, we have an event called the Print Slam, which is a um, one day, one night pop up sale and exhibition of work by all of our very talented students. And it's a chance to kind of see what everyone did um, in other classes, in the open lab access sort of section. And, you know, and, and for the December one, I, you know, I usually do all my Christmas shopping at the print slam. So everyone gets, everyone gets, uh, gets Rizzo prints and zines um, pretty much every year. Uh, there's just too much good stuff. Um, and, uh, and for a lot of our students, it is something to work towards. It's something that really, um, you know, it is uh, for a lot of them the first time that they've uh, shown their work in an exhibition context, it's the first time that they've sold their work, the first time they've had their work on the table and people mm -hmm. are seeing their work in real time. Um, okay. you know, and it's, it's uh, you know, it's a big deal for like a little people. webinar about. If you guys uh, could please just mute yourself, thank you. Um, so that's a little bit about the Rezo Lab. Um, you can see so, a lot of the examples. So yeah, it gets pretty packed at our Princeton events. So, you know, all of this, uh, the fact that we offer classes for the general public, we don't have to be an SBA student. We also offer undergrad and graduate classes. Um, but this is, you know, and the fact that, you know, our location and, and the timing, the fact that we, you know, when we opened, uh, there really weren't any resources available for Rezo printing. Um, we sort of, you know, uh, I'm, I'm very proud of the kind of impact that we've had and um, the sort of how many people depend on us as, uh, as a resource. So many people in the NYC career community. Um, so there's an awareness of our space that's spread beyond um, just the SVA ecosystem. Right? And this is an example of some press that we got in a design magazine. Um, based in Guangzhou, China a few years ago to design uh, 360 degrees. Um, and if you wanna find out more about the lab, I definitely would suggest checking out our website. Um, we've got a gallery section where you can sort of scroll through and um, see some examples of other work that was printed at the lab. So um, a little bit about the Rizzo lab. And as far as myself, I'm gonna quickly talk about my own kind of Rezo journey and a bit about my class. So I, uh, in my own work, I'm very interdisciplinary. I make paintings, uh, I do freelance illustration work, um, and I've been using Rezo printing in my work since about um, 2010. Um, but my, my roots were really in, in printmaking. So I studied illustration um, as an undergrad, but I never, you know, I wasn't committed to just strictly being a commercial artist. Uh, I wanted to be part of the gallery world. I wanted to sort of, you know, I didn't want to limit myself to just, just making one kind of work. And printmaking is where it all sort of came together for me. It gave me a production tool to get my work out there. Um, I learned a lot of sort of skills and I, it was a very important um, medium that the sort of uh, was very liberating for me and also taught me about limitations too. So when you're working with printmaking, you you have a limited palette of colors um, that you that you need to use. The more colors you you use, um, the more F, the more work and the more time a design is going to take. And then you quickly learn that it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be better. But um, eventually, I started. You know, I I stopped making additions, um, even though uh, they were initially as opposed to paintings, making additions and making of, of prints and books. Um, your work is a lot more accessible, but um, you know, at a certain point, I started using it more to scale up, to do installations or to make larger, larger pieces. Um, and, you know, it was about 2010 when I had a friend who was very involved in the world of scenes and small publishing and artist books. And um, he was aware of the kind of work I did. He knew, he knew that um, I was a printmaker and he had gotten a hold of something that he called a um, automated, uh, automated um, screen printing machine. And you know, I, I couldn't really picture what that was going to look like. I thought it was either going to be something very, uh, just very large. Like, how can you automate something that, in my own experience, was very messy, very physical, very chaotic? Um, I had, you know, gotten to the point where I was scaling up and I was working with very large screens and 
my experience of screen printing involved me being covered in ink. So I thought it was gonna be a similar experience, like a giant contraption, some kind of Rube, Rube Goldberg uh, sort of machine with a crank and you get ink on your shoes and you get your face would get sprayed with paint. Um, and when he took me to see the machine, I was extremely disappointed. It was this dinky little copy machine, looked a little bit too wide. Um, it was, uh, you know, it, it just was, was a bit, it was a bit of a letdown, but he opened up the front panel and gave me a chance to pull out the drum. This is a dramatic reenactment, by the way, this is from our first Rezo Lab info session. But back in 2010, when I was first laying my eyes on a Rezo graph, that's what intrigued me about it. The fact that you have to handle the drums um, and you have to understand how the machine works um, a little bit. There's a sort of, it feels like a piece of technology that belongs in like a sci-fi movie from the eighties. You sort of feel like you're, arming a nuclear warhead just to change the colors. You know, I found that, I found that fascinating that the combination of that with the sort of the 1980s administrative assistant vibe that you're making, you're copying spreadsheets for the boss for the board meeting for the next day. Um, so what was the most amazing about it for me was the fact that suddenly all of this work that I've been doing in print, I could do much faster. Um, I could, I could make additions very quickly. I could sell them for affordable rates, um, even more affordable than an artist book that it, maybe I was selling for 50, 100, $200. I could make um, editions of 100, 200, 500 books, sell them for 10, 15, $20, make them more accessible. And you know, eventually next thing I knew I'd become a publisher. I was running a press called Mega Press, publishing my work and the work of other artists um, and becoming even more integrated in the conversation, You know, this sort of cool, of um, activity that I see um, the, the world of zines and small publishing as being, all this DIY publishing, all this, all this activity, which is really like, a, it's, a, it's a place where artists sort of exchange ideas. Um, and these are some of the publications I put out over the last few years, the last, I should say, uh, you know, at this point, almost 10 years running Megapress and 13 years using Rezo as a as part of my practice in addition to everything else that I do. So the class that I am teaching draws on all of that experience. Um, and it's an intro to Rezo class, but it's in the context of, it's with the goal of working towards making a publication, making a zine, um, making something that maybe more, more maybe, you know, uh, should be called an artist book. So uh, we'll be going over various techniques um, and beyond focusing on making books, you're going to end up with a print design toolkit. We'll be going over a variety of techniques um, that will build on each other. So spot color, building up an image with layers of color. Um, and all these images are, you know, this is work from previous students. Um, uh, so, you know, how do you build up an image? How do you, how do you sort of use an economy of colors um, to make subtle blends or maybe make something more graphic? Um, posterization, um, which is a more sort of graphic Andy Warhol approach. Duotone, which starts to take advantage of the fact that with Rezo printing, you can get very subtle tonalities um, and values. CMYK, um, which is, I should say faux CMYK. So using non-CMYK colors, um, you know, Rezo colors that weren't derived for, that weren't created for this technique that's used in commercial printing to make full color images. Um, to to make full color images, so the the result ends up being a little bit different, but you know sort of close enough, and that makes you understand what goes into commercial printing. Um, of course, book binding will be going over a variety of techniques, um, and here's some examples of other work that was made. These actually were made by students who took my online class and printed them on their own, and then we'll be putting it all sort of into context. So going way back to not only to Johannes Gutenberg's invent, invention of printing press in 1450, but even further back to the invention of movable type in ancient China. Um, and, you know, the ripple effects of, of what this invention uh, led to, how it changed history, you know, what, you know, whether we can consider uh, Martin Luther's manifesto, his 99 theses, is that, you know, one of the first zines that literally changed the world. Um, the work of William Blake was also a printmaker and publisher self-publisher, um, the sci-fi fanzines of the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, the, um, the underground press in the 60s, 
Um, you know, it, you know, also people like Emery Douglas, the designer for the Black Panthers, uh, punk magazines, all the way up to rave zines of the 90s. So, um, you know, I think a lot of what we go over, um, not only is Rezo printing like a laboratory for printing itself, and the Rezo Lab says lab for Rezo printing, uh, literally, um, but this class itself, if you, you know, if, if you're trying to get into publishing on a small scale, next thing you know, you really have to start drawing on a lot of the skills and approaches that go into um, making any kind of enterprise, um, any kind of small business, any kind of brand. Um, so a lot of these, a lot of things we go over, um, you know, you can really scale them up, I think, infinitely. So uh, if you're interested in this class, I'll put the link in the uh, in the chat. It's the class is 10 students right now. So there's five more spots and it's starting in just a couple of weeks, Wednesday nights, um, 6 to 930. Uh, and... And yeah, I'll be, uh, so we're going to be doing a little bit of a Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat um, and uh, and we'll, we'll kind of get to them towards the end. So, um, all right. So next up, I want to introduce our first, our second presenter, I guess, after me. Um, so who's teaching a brand new, uh, brand new class, both in person and online. So uh, Claudia Rueda is a picture book art author, New York Times bestseller illustrator and a 2016 Hans Christian Andersen Award nominee based in New York. Her books have been published by Scholastic Press, Penguin, Abrams, and Chronicle, among others, and have been translated into 16 different languages. She's the author of Bunny Slopes, a New York Public Library and Junior Library Guild selection, and the illustrator of Here Comes the Easter Bunny, a Kirkus Best Book of the Year, and a Goodreads Choice Award um, winning book. So uh, with that, I want to turn it over to Claudia. So um, Claudia, if you want to go ahead and take it away, the floor is yours. Is it okay? Is it good? Okay. Uh, thanks, Fan. I'll go with this. Okay. Uh, hello and thanks to everyone for showing up today. My name is Claudia Rueda and I want to talk to you about my class uh, for the semester titled Picture Books Crafting Stories with Words and Pictures. I, as Pan already mentioned, and I, I am a picture book author myself. I have published more than 40 picture books here in the US and overseas. And I'm excited to share my experience and my process, especially my process is a class very related to process with you in this class. I introduced myself as a picture book author, and this is very important for me to, to, to make clear. Uh, that means I write both with words and with pictures, and then Put them, put them all together in order to create a story. In picture books and modern picture books, uh, the meaning is the interaction of uh, pictures and words, and that's what you do as a picture book author. And I must better say, um, I create a sequence of images and combining them with a text in order to write a story because uh, uh, that's what uh, is, uh, visual storytelling is about. And, um, and then, and that's what I need a storyboard. So I always start my picture book creation process with a storyboard. After revisions and many revisions, I create a picture book dummy and if it, uh, and I feel that it's working well and I like it, I submit it to publishers. And if I am very, very lucky, I sign a contract and have my, and have my picture book published. Well, that's, that's my process in a nutshell, I would say that. So let's talk about the class, the course. Mm. In this class, we are going to recreate uh, the process that I just told you about. You start with an idea and uh, I'm gonna walk you through the process of having a picture book idea in your head even if you don't have the text or the visuals, but you have the idea and you, you have some kind of verbal and visual information that you would like to put in the book. And I walk you through the process on, of uh, 
turn it into a picture book dummy and and to send to to publishers this is not about the final color version of the book it's what you actually send to the publishers is a black and white normally picture book dummy so the publisher will have an idea if you want if, if you can write with pictures if you can do a sequence if you can combine it with text so that's what the class will be about uh, the class description says that uh, this class is for anyone who wants to develop the visual thing, writing and storytelling skills required to plan and create an innovative uh, picture book. So what are visual writing skills? Uh, um, first, I want to say that this is not an illustration class. Meaning it's not about illustrating what it's already mentioned on the text. Many, many, many people think that uh, a picture book is any book that has pictures in it, and it's not. Uh, a picture book, in, in picture books, you, you, you use visual storytelling, a visual narrative, and, and the visuals are part of the telling of the story. You combine it with text, and then you have the story. So in a modern picture book, you want to say something with the pictures, like, for example, adding some drama or challenging the meaning of the words. You want to work a lot uh, with challenging the meaning of the words with the pictures. So the reader will have a new interpretation of the words and also of the pictures. And that's very, very nice about uh, new picture books. And many illustrated books do not have that. I also mentioned uh, storytelling skills and visual storytelling skills and how to combine it with text. We're going to work a lot on that because the text is also very important. It's, it's a very peculiar and particular text, the one you use in picture books, because most of the stories are already told in, in, in the pictures. So, um, but uh, story means the passage of time and change. Um, uh, so telling stories visually requires more than one picture. It requires a visual sequence where the visuals are connected, but uh, when you put them together on the pages of the picture book, you make a story. And for that, you, you definitely need a story uh, a storyboard. Um, so the, the sequence will be readable and consistent and, uh, and you need a storyboard for that. So we're going to work a lot on a storyboarding because that's one of the secrets for a picture book to work. So we'll, we'll work, most of the, of, the, of the class will be focused on doing a great storyboard and then move that. The, the part of moving that to, to a dummy is much easier, but the core of the, of the class will be creating the story in a, on, in a storyboard. And I also mentioned innovative picture books. That's also very important. We don't want to repeat what has already been done um, in, in the beginning of the 20th century, we really want to do, uh, I really want to challenge you to do new things and um, especially challenging the text and the image in, and doing uh, clever, interesting combinations. So um, uh, in order to do that, I'm gonna, during class, we're gonna study several good picture books and some not so good, so you will also learn what, how, not to, how not to do it. And uh, this will also give you ideas on the multiple possibilities of the book, picture book media, because many people is focused on, on, on just um, books for little kids. We, we also have picture books for adults. We have picture books for different ages. We have dual audiences for picture books, but also the formats can be very innovative as it was in the beginning of the 20th century. Um, it will be very interesting to do something like that. And, um, and, uh, and, and, and well, and I will show you many kinds of picture books, all are new and well, the ones here are really good ones. So how do I structure the class? Mm. During the first part of the class, I uh, will do something that I call nutrition, which I mean, we'll see visual narratives, visual storytelling in the art world. world. I, I like art history a lot, and there are very good examples of visual storytelling, storytelling there since the writing was not that important in the, in the, old, in the old times. And uh, we also look at classic and contemporary picture books uh, that will illustrate the class subject. On the second part of the class of each week, 
uh, you will work on your picture book project and we'll have critiques, uh, we'll do revisions, which are also very important. When you publish books, you also, you always get revisions from your publisher, your editor, so you, you better get used to it. You learn about critiquing yourself and critiquing others and you learn a lot by, by doing revisions. So to summarize, uh, during the eight weeks of the class, you will plan your picture book project. We will do that on the first class. We will bring text. I will provide you with some text. If you don't want to write it, you can bring your own text. And, um, and you will plan your picture book. You will sketch the book using thumbnails then on the second class, which is the thumbnails are like a rough sketch version of a, of a storyboard. And then you will storyboard the book on the third, fourth, probably fifth class. And you will make revisions. The revisions are done on the storyboards. And when you feel you're ready, you will make a final dummy ready for submissions. We will build an actual picture book uh, on paper, but we also do a PDF because most publishers now want to see PDFs. Don't, they don't see uh, paper and dummies anymore, but sometimes it's useful to have them. And on the final class, we'll talk about the industry and submitting your work, and we'll have a special guest that will help you with that. So um, you're all very welcome to my class. Thank you. Here's the outline in case you want to take a look at it. Just we'll talk about many, many, many subjects related to picture book writing. So you're very welcome. I will also add the link to the class in the chat. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claudia. Uh, yeah, and I um, I actually added the link to first the in-person and the, then the online class. Thank you, wonderful. Um, so you can you can check out those links if, if you're interested in signing up right now. Um, so next up, I'm gonna just pull up my slide again to introduce our next presenter. Oops. Um, Um, second, Aiden Fitzgerald, who's, uh, just joined, just joined our, um, uh, our team of Reason Lab faculty back in the fall of 2022. And he's going to talk about the classes that he's teaching, including, uh, a couple of online Rezo classes and in-person class focusing on artist books and abstract comics and both of the boot camp uh, intensives that are coming up for those of you that either have taken an online class or are um, you know or have enough for making experience to kind of bypass the requirement of an online class. Um, Aidan Fitzgerald received his BFA in painting and drawing from the University of Washington. He was the co-founder of the free Seattle all comics newspaper Intruder um, and the graphic designer for the Seattle Small Press Festival, April. He started Cold Cube Press in 2015 and dedicated his art practice to publishing and showcasing other artists and illustrators. Over the years, Cold Cube has published over 120 artists and writers from all over the world. Aiden was the managing editor of Grandma, Grandma Poetry, and he has taught classes at Western Washington University, Hugo House in Seattle, and Seattle Central Community College. And now, SVA. He lives and works in New York City. Um, and with that, I'm going to let uh, Aiden bedazzle us um, with, uh, with his multimedia extravaganza that he has prepared for you. So Aiden, you can go ahead. Yeah, I have a full uh, VR. Everybody has to have a headset to enjoy my uh, presentation. But uh, in lieu of that, I will be sharing my screen and showing you some still images um I'm not gonna leave the meeting uh yeah so uh i'm gonna talk with y'all a little bit about my uh couple classes i guess there's three classes in total that i'm gonna be uh running uh in the fall here um and uh just to give a little bit of background i've been um all my classes are sort of rezo centric so the background that pan gave on the on the the rezo lab and rezo printing basically summed up what the rezo does and what it can do. Um, and so first, I'm going to talk about my sort of like intro to Rezo course, which is online. So those of you that are 
um, not in New York, or uh, if you are in New York, but you don't want to um, uh, head into Chelsea at uh, for four hours um, uh, during the week, uh, and you still want to learn how to Rezo print, uh, you can take my online course. And basically, I'm just going to kind of go through um, what we cover in that online course. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about my art books and abstract comics class, uh, which does cover uh, all of the methods of Rezo printing that I cover in the online class. It just then applies everything to an in-person um, books uh, making class, right? So just to jump right into it, um, this is sort of like the first image that I start off with. It's an example of like a spot color Rezo print uh, that with uh, four different saturation points and my four different colors, black, light, teal, yellow, and red. Um, and then uh, the sort of foundation of Rezo, I'm not giving anything away, or maybe this is just the first uh, fact. You all get this for free just for showing up. But the first fact in the class is that in order to get this print, you're going to have to set up your file like this, right? So the foundation of Rezo printing is that we are focusing on the value, right? The spectrum of 0% black, which is white, to 100% black, which is black. Uh, and then the uh, those values when printed in color, translate to saturation levels, right? So the reddest red that you can get is going to be 100% black in the uh, black print layer, right? So like I said, that's the first fact. Uh, and then from there, that's the sort of the foundation. And we cover spot color printing. Um, this is a page from a book called Won't to Can't that I published. Um, it's a three color Rezo print in orange, black, and mint, right? Uh, and one of the things, one of the goals of my classes is that you can look at any Rezo print and be able to kind of work backwards and go, oh, I can picture in my mind how they would set up this file to get this print, right? So sort of stepping up in complexity, uh, here we have a piece by Daria Tesler, who's a Portland-based illustrator, wonderful screen printer, and just an all-around wonderful human. Uh, and this is another example of a spot color printing, except with a lot more um, colors going on and a lot more complexity, right? And then sort of moving on, we can, we're gonna begin to learn how when you layer colors, how that can change, uh, when you layer inks, how that can change the colors that they're representing, right? So here we have purple layered over top of orange, layered over top of yellow, and that's gonna make this nice kind of like earthy umber brown, right? Uh, and so moving on from spot color printing, we get into uh, duotone printing, both for drawings. Here's a piece by Jesse Ang. Um, and then also for photos, right? So here is a two color print in blue and orange. When we're learning about two color printing, specifically duotones, we're gonna learn how these colors interact and how to sort of uh, get our prints, um, make our files, set up our files uh, so that we can uh, make prints like this, right? So this is an online course, it's entirely on Zoom. Uh, and what that means is that I'll be basically walking you through the Photoshop preparation process in order to make, um, in order to get your, your, if you're a photographer, for instance, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to set your files up so that this will print, right? Uh, and then stepping forward from posterization and duotones, we start getting into the four color process, right? So here's a nice little um, sort of uh, stop motion uh, set of the four color process here, right? So we start off with aqua, aqua and yellow, aqua, yellow, and black, and then aqua, yellow, black, fluorescent, and pink, right? So the last two weeks of the class are spent devoted to four color printing, what we call faux CMYK in the Rezo community, right? Because we are simulating the process CMYK, the CMYK process, but with Rezo inks, right? And then these exact same ink colors here uh, are gonna be used to print, they can print a wide variety of things. So this is a spread from a book called Wand by my collaborator in Seattle, Michael Heck. Um, this is a selection from um, Cold Cube 6, the sixth anthology that I published back in 2021. Uh, and this is by Nina Costco. She's an artist in Belgium. This is a piece uh, from a book called Glorious Internet that I published in 2019. Um, and all of these uh, pieces are all published, are all printed using the same ink, right? The same Rezo inks and the same process, right? So you can see the wide range of work that we can print on the Rezo and just how beautiful the work can be, right? So whether you're an artist or an illustrator or a designer, 
Um, this online course, it's six weeks. It's a great way to get your sort of technical chops up so that you can uh, learn how to set up your files for Rezo printing. And then uh, you can then take the uh, in-person boot camp, which is at the Rezo lab, right? So when you take the online course, then you qualify to take the uh, in-person boot camp, which is a two-day intensive workshop over the weekend. Uh, there's one at the end of September, and then there's one another one at the end of October. And basically, we um, take all of the file preparation that we learned online, and uh, we apply it to uh, the actual like on press experience, right? If you're not in New York, then you can take my online course um, and learn how the Rezo works, and then either um, print on the Rezo yourself if you are lucky enough to have a Rezo, or if there is a print studio nearby that you can access, maybe rent time. Or if you are going to be working as a client for a contact a contract printer, you will be their favorite client, right? So if you are in Minneapolis or in Portland or in Cleveland or wherever the heck you are, uh, if you send them files uh, set up the way that I show you how to set them up, they will love you. Because as somebody who used to print for clients, um, I cannot tell you how typically scattered a lot of Rezo print files are. So if you really want to sort of like lock in your skills as a printer, as an illustrator, and as an artist, then this class is for you, right? So that is my online class and the um, intensive bootcamp, right? And all of those skills uh, are then wrapped in a very uh, beautiful and fun and interesting package in my uh, art books and abstract comics course, right? So this is an in-person in -person class uh, at the Rezo Lab. Tuesday nights, six to 10. It's a lot of fun. Um, it is like my favorite class. It's one of my favorite things uh, that I do. Um, and every this is just an example of some of the books that I bring to class. I bring books to class every class uh, for people to look at, um, you know, sort of get inspired by, take photos of. A lot of times people will recognize books from Instagram and be like, oh my God, I saw, I know this or blah, 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 blah. Um, and because I spent so much time on the West Coast, I have some stuff from the West Coast that has never made it out here to New York and vice versa, right? Uh, and so I start off um, each class, uh, we are talking about art books that we see, and we're gonna go into all of the methods of risograph printing that I cover in the online course, except we're gonna get actual on-press uh, experience uh, in class, right? So uh, not only are we learning about um, spot color and how to set up your files for spot color illustrations, but we're also going to learn about the history of the grid in design and fine art, right? So we're going to be looking at like um, Der Blue Rider and like Mies van der Rohe and also uh, Vermeer and some of the Dutch masters and how they uh, use the grid to sort of unlock a lot of the compositions in their work, right? So it's art books and abstract comics, right? So we're going to be dealing with kind of like the fine art stuff, the design stuff, and then we're also going to get into more comic based work. Um, it's not a prescriptive class. I will not tell you how to draw. I will not tell you how to make comics. I will not tell you specifically to make comics or specifically to make art. I feel like if you're going to be interested in this class, you're, that's probably already part of your practice. Um, if you are a cartoonist um, or uh, if you're an illustrator and you're looking to sort of get a little bit more of a solid footing in um, abstraction, or if you think that maybe you could, you're could, you interested in how abstraction could build on the practice that you already have. I think this is a great class to look into. Uh, and we do end up working on a lot of collaborative books. This is the most recent class that I took. Uh, I swear, or that I taught, I swear they're just smiling because they're having a good time. I didn't tell them to smile. Um, but you can see that uh, there's a lot of books here that I actually just featured up here. Here's Newports of Brooklyn, Oneric Strata. So they're all, a lot of the work that we're doing is sort of taking from the books that I bring into class, we're drawing inspiration and we're also collaborating on a lot of work. So we end up making three collaborative books um, and then everybody makes a, two sort of personal books, right? So in the 10 week class, everybody walks away with um, at least five books, uh, except also everybody's personal books that they make, they end up making enough copies for everybody else in the class. So. Uh, you, it, it's a, a sort of a very book centered um, uh, uh, sort of 10 weeks. Uh, this is a collaborative project that we do together. It's a collection of grids. 
uh, and we are layering the grids in two different Rezo colors. And then everybody is making several grids and we're layering them over top of one another. It's a great way to learn about how the Rezo works, how to experiment with grids, how to break out of our sort of like representational um, box that sometimes we can get put in and also look at a couple of color combinations that maybe we wouldn't uh, typically want to do, right? So here we have bright red, fluorescent pink and blue. Here we have uh, violet and green, right? So there's a lot of really interesting colors sort of flying around in the class. Um, and then at the end of the class, like I said, everybody makes um, a personal book. And I say personal book, not to say like, it doesn't have to be, you know, diary entries or anything. It is a sort of conceptual book, right? So you sort of conceive of a cohesive idea uh, for one specific publication, and we will uh, carry through with that publication from start to finish, right? So that is from conceiving the idea, pitching the idea, making the dummy, uh, book design, I'll run you through InDesign and, and how we're gonna lay out books specifically for Rezo printing, and then the actual file preparation for printing, and then you do the printing, and then you do the assembly, and then you present it to the class. So these are just a few of the books that some of my students have made. Uh, they're all really beautiful. Everybody, I'm very selfish, and I require that all those students make at least one for me as well, so that I get to feed my book addiction, right? So these are all just selections of student work for my collection. Um, and then on top of that, students are also making prints, right? So these are a couple of my uh, students that until they had taken my class, they had never printed on a Rezo before. These are all sort of like faux CMYK prints. Um, and uh, this is a sort of a cut paper. This is by an artist named Helen Quinn. She actually did this book here, Rising, right there. Um, and then this last print is by uh, Kyla Paolucci, right? So these are all, um, everything that I've showed you in the first sort of spiel section of the spiel was stuff that I printed in my experience as a, a Rezo printer. And then everything down here, this is all student work, right? So um, I am uh, a big believer in the power of books and also um, how sort of fun and collaborative uh, art book making can be. Uh, it's a really great class for illustrators, cartoonists, designers, writers, poets. Uh, I've had um, uh, uh, 3D uh, modeling, like I've had like VR and AR designers take the class because they're like, I spent so much time on screen that I wanted to do something tactile and in the real world, right? Um, people end up making like little mini cookbooks. I had somebody make a, their wedding invitations. I've had people make sort of like little, um, uh, book of recipes from their, uh, grandmother who recently passed and stuff like that. So it's a great way to kind of like build, uh, on your process and also make work for people and, and with people. Uh, and yeah, it's just a really fun class and, um, you all should take it because it's great. Thank you so much, Aiden. Um, informative and uh, interesting and fun. Fun and um, interesting, yes. Fun and interesting. Um, so our last presenter, um, who's gonna talk about her class is Laura Catherine Brown, who is a writer, comics maker, and visual storyteller. Her first novel, Quickening, was a Barnes & Noble Discover pick, and her second, Made by Mary, received an independent publisher's Silver, Silver Medal Award. Her comics have appeared in World War III Illustrated Anthology and Had Magazine. She earned her MFA in Visual Narrative from the School of Visual Arts in 2022 and is currently working on a graphic novel. Um, and Laura, if you want to go ahead and uh, take it away and talk about your brand new class, um, Yes, thank you. Um, can you hear me? Yes, okay. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so thanks everyone for being here. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm gonna be teaching um, creative writing for visual artists. It's Tuesday night, uh, 10 weeks um, online starting September 26. Um, here, here's a bit about me. I mean, uh, Pan already said, but I have two published novels, several published short stories. I also work as a graphic designer, and I've had a few comics published. Um, 
here's some examples of my visual work with um, a lot of writing. Uh, I, um, I came at this as a writer. Um, and this class actually, though, is not about me. It is about you and your writing. So here's like the syllabus in a nutshell. Um, we're going to cover a lot. Fiction, auto fiction, nonfiction, poetry, hybrid, and everything in between. Um, and in writing our way through these forms, we'll be looking at voice, language, and narrative elements like character, plot, point of view, dialogue, setting, theme, audience, and revision. Revision is the beating heart of writing. I might even say writing is revising. So during our group Zoom sessions, two hours, we'll have an in-class writing exercise, usually based on images that you bring in. I encourage in the class people to share their work aloud because language is rhythm and reading aloud can be illuminating for the author to hear their own flow of sentences. Um, but I will never put anyone on the spot to read aloud. Um, However, uh, having said that, we will start each class with a check-in of a few words. We'll go around and free associate what's happening right at this moment for you right now. Like if it's my turn and we're going around and I'm like checking in and using my words, I would say like, okay, I'm really nervous. I'm excited. Um, and I'm also a little breathless. Okay, next person. So we going to do that just to bring us all into um, the same space. And the point is to tap into yourself and express it in words without the censor. For homework, also known as asynchronous assignments, there will be assigned readings, which we'll talk about in class, and to, just to look at narrative techniques and strategies there will also be writing assignments, some of which will become an expansion or revision of the exercise you began in class. Um, for the first four or five weeks, you'll submit your writing assignments only to me. It's not to the group and I will provide feedback. And once everyone becomes more confident and we have a community, we'll share the work and we'll talk about each other's work. Uh, but there will be criteria and guidelines for how we talk about each other's work, giving the author the power to shape the discussion. I'm not going through all the bullets here, a lot of writing. I just want to say that we're not here to judge the writing. We're here to inquire, respond, and support the author to tell the story or the poem that they're trying to tell. So the point of any discussion is to be helpful to the author. I'm saving the best part of the course for last. And the central essential element of this class is the journal. So all participants will be encouraged to keep a journal. Any kind of notebook will do. Nice pens are good too. And you'll use this journal to create raw material from which you'll draw to write your stories, your essays, your poems. Um, this is on top of the writing exercise we'll be doing in class. Here are just a few of my journals. And the journal is intended as a place of freedom and exploration, which I hope will become a habit long after the class is over for everyone. If you're a visual artist, I'll say it's akin to a sketchbook. I will provide weekly writing prompts and for the journaling process, you set a timer, five to 15 minutes, set the bar low, don't make it too challenging, and write longhand without stopping. Everyone can do five minutes. These timed writing sessions can generate a lot of rich material and help writers develop verbal fluidity and a sense of their own language rhythms. Also, primarily, it cuts right through the inner critic which is the only way to access your deep, authentic work. And so with a journal, you can approach your work without the pressure to make every line sing. I won't see the journal unless you want to show me something. It's for you. 
um, you'll be typing stuff up from your journal to turn into stories or poems or essays. But in the journal, you can be imprecise, ineloquent, ungrammatical. But the journal will over time suggest connections not immediately apparent or themes and obsessions and images you might not understand the significance of right away. The journal will validate the seemingly inconsequential, the unconscious, the irrational. All you have to do is write without stopping and without judging. So my intention with this class is to get you to a form, a habit, and a writing process that will lead you to your most authentic work. If you're already experienced as a writer, it's also a great way to um, move forward in your story or figure out stuff by using these writing prompts. But it's also to practice a certain state of mind, to become present to notice what it is that you're noticing and to put it in your own words. So to wrap it up, I'd say this course is about writing as a process of discovery, generating work and learning how to shape and edit and revise and even finish pieces. And that leads to even deeper discovery. At the end, we'll talk about how to use your writing to inform your visual work. And we'll create a PDF zine with everyone's favorite pieces. So uh, that's me. Thank you very much for listening. And I'll stop the share as soon as I can figure out how to do that. Okay. Thank you so much, Laura. That was great. Um, God, I, I want to take all these classes. Um, so yeah, uh, you guys have been very... Uh, very quiet in the chat. Um, I've been I've been posting. There's links to all of the classes that we presented tonight. Um, I guess now now we're going to open it up for any questions you guys might have. So if anybody wants to add their question in the chat, or um, you can go ahead and just turn your mic on and and just and just pipe up if you have something you want to ask us. Any questions? Um, and while we're waiting for you guys to formulate your thoughts, um, I just want to also remind you that we have a second info session this Thursday with five presenters, none of whom are me. I'll also be hosting that info session, but I'm, uh, you know, tonight's the night that I'm presenting my class. Um, we have five more classes, five more instructors, and um, two more Rezo instructors, and three more instructors who will be teaching non rezo classes. But all these classes, all they all deal with overlapping themes and story and, and process, and um, they're all interdisciplinary. So um, there's a lot you can get out of any of these classes. Uh, you can mix and match and take one class one semester that will feed into your work in the next class the next semester. Um, any questions about the Rezo Lab or about Claudia and Laura's classes. Claudia and Laura are actually, uh, they're teaching in the program for the first time. Um, so these are brand new classes. So um, you know, it's your chance to get in on the ground floor. Um, Aiden, Claudia, Laura, is there anything you guys want to add about your classes or about, about anything else that's, that's kind of relevant? I'll just add quickly that this class had been offered uh, it, with the same title of Creative Visual uh, creative writing for visual artists. Um, it was taught by Suzanne Reese, who, um, who, who's a good friend. So um, it, I just want to, if anyone here has taken her class, this will be different, um, but it, it will also, um, it, we won't repeat the same stuff, but we take various approaches that are different from hers, but, you know, build on hers. Sound, sounds great. Um, uh, so we have one question from Jill from Jill Sullivan. Jill says uh, is asking whether these classes are open to to beginners, um, and she's mostly specifically asking about Claudia and Laura Laura's Laura's classes. Um, what what would you say? What kind of experience um, is you know does effective student need to have to to kind of be able to just kind of jump right in? Uh, thank you. 
Yeah, definitely open to beginners or people who already have some ideas for picture book illustrators, graphic designers, writers. I, I even had philosophers, uh, teachers, all, from all kinds of like, the only thing is that you really are interested in doing something with both pictures and words that you like it and you're interested in it. But the rest, if I can, it's okay for open level, definitely. That's that's the whole point. It could be for anyone, really, really, because it's about process. So you you go at your own speed. There's no result, specific result. Everyone goes to where she or he wants to go. I I would have to say the same. It I'm very process oriented, and beginners are absolutely welcome. Um, I, I feel like anyone can, uh, anyone who wants to free their sort of inner critic, free themselves of that and use their words, they're welcome into the class. Um, okay, so do, and I, I believe, Aiden, so my class, and I believe also, Aiden, we, I, your class uh, is kind of open for beginners with, caveat yeah right? like I think the online know. class for sure is if you've never even opened photoshop in your life this is a great class for you to learn um uh the adobe suite or at least photoshop so yeah the online class certainly open for beginners the art books and abstract comics class is also open for beginners uh in fact i would probably say that they you might even get more out of it if you are coming in completely fresh because um it is sort of a process that's based around improvisation and collaboration and like uh sort of applying the rezo taking the rezo printing process to what you already what your practice already is so uh there's a very steep learning curve at the beginning to just like how to do what we want to do on the machine but uh it's open to people of all levels uh people that have printed on the rezo before but might want more um guidance or people that don't even know what a rezo is but want to learn and and make work and make books yeah uh somebody asked a question do asked if uh if i decide to take an online course would it be possible for me to use the printing services at the rezo lab so the way that that works is if you take my online course then you qualify for the in-person boot camp um at the one at the end of September, and then there's another boot camp, a separate boot camp at the end of October. Um, so after you take the boot camp, then you can print to your heart's content at the Rezo Lab, right? So the online course is just to get your file preparation up, and then the boot camp is to get your actual like physical IRL print experience, like on the machine. Um, and the cost of the boot camp covers the cost of studio access. So it's kind of like a two birds, one stone. Yeah, and, and I actually, uh, I posted the links to both of those boot camps in uh, in the, um, the chat. So um, that's there and you can scroll up for all the other links. Um, and one thing I wanted to, just in terms of how you worded your question, the, uh, the printing services at the at the Rezo Lab, um, that's, you know, I'm not sure if, if uh, if the implication was uh, that the question involved, you know, the idea of, of the Rezo Lab printing for you, but I just want to say that um, that's that's a, something people get mixed up about often is that they'll assume or they they think that we you know we print for for uh, outside parties and um, and we always say no, we we can't print your work and we're not going to take your money to print your work, but we're happy to to give you the tools to print your own work. So that's kind of what our space is about. Um, in terms of, of you printing your own work, that's a big part of it, that, you know, being part of that, experiencing that sort of exploration, um, the process of sort of discovering what, how your work might change with the limitations and the possibilities of the Rezo process. Um, and, you know, and, and then again, like that, that's, it's an unlimited, um, you know, it's, it's an unlimited access option. So there's literally, you can print as much as you want. There's one flat fee lab access um, fee that everyone pays. Uh, some people use it more, some people use it less. It's like a gym membership. You know, the people that never show up kind of subsidize the people that are there all the time. Um, so, uh, and there's a wonderful community that's sort of built, that de that's developed organically around our space and around that 
that op option that we that we offer to people because we could very easily charge per print and per master, but we really want to make it open and accessible and democratic um, for anyone who wants to walk through the door and get training and to do the work. Um, okay, so there's a question from Quinn. Hello, Quinn. Um, I read the lab team. I'm interested in taking another one, another class. Uh, let's see. Is there a specific course we would recommend? I mean, I think that's that really depends on where you where you're at in terms of your own practice. I mean, each of each of us, um, myself, uh, Aiden, our other instructors, Andrew, and um, and Ren, we're going to be in the other info session on Thursday. We each have our own approach. It overlaps. Um, some of us have sort of, you know, maybe a workflow that's in a, a little bit of contention with um, another one of our colleagues, but we all can kind of get to the same point in a different route. So, you know, if, if even if you're going over some similar material, you're going to learn it in a different style, in a different way, um, you know, and, and, you know, maybe you might learn some new tricks um, that weren't covered in the other class. Um, but also it's the, the content is different. Like I focus on zines. Um, you know, the intro class is very general. So Ren is teaching a new class that's focusing on making prints specifically for illustrators, like illustrative prints, um, as opposed to the mini comics class, which he's now offering every other semester. Andrew teaches a class which is specifically focused on drawing um, and painting. So there's actual in-class drawing sessions. So um, yeah, Quinn, I, yeah, I see I, you turn your uh, camera on. Uh, Hi, Quinn. Um, I selfishly uh, think you should take my class. That's the one that I recommend. Um, but yeah, like I'm just get echoing what Pan said. Uh, we all sort of, you're going to learn, I mean, you already know how to print, right? So uh, it's really just about sort of like how, what specifically you want to focus on. Um, and yeah, I end up doing a lot of in my class, there's a lot of like collaborative work. There's no like actual group projects like outside of class, but there's a lot of collaborative work in class, which is really cool. Um, and it is very kind of like book centric, like we're working on making books. Um, we only really make prints for the first couple weeks of class. Um, but then obviously what we're learning, you can apply to work outside of that. Um, and yeah, kind of like what Pan said, we all kind of, are you're going to learn maybe different tricks or strategies from different instructors, but it's all sort of the fundamental uh, base, the, the, the foundations of risograph printing are, 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 you know, the same across the board. Um, and then sort of piggybacking on that, Laura R just asked, um, hi everyone. I'm a low key illustrator trying to learn more about layout zine design so I can make my own. I don't know which class you'd recommend for this. Um, yeah, like I said, in my class, we do have a whole day and a video dedicated to book layout, right? So entirely, it's it's um, probably about an hour and a half of me just on InDesign walking you through how to lay out zines. And those can be entirely text if you want to publish chapbooks, or they can be entirely photos or illustrations or comics and so on and so forth. Um, and yeah, so... If you're interested in zines and small publishing, either one of me or Pan's class would totally work, you know? Um, but yeah, so I feel like you, Laura's and Quinn's questions kind of braid together pretty nicely. Um, yeah. And then, you know, I, I would welcome you to also uh, log on to our Thursday night info session where we're going to do it all over again with a whole different uh, crew and you can hear from Andrew and, and Ren and, um, and and maybe can also consider taking a comedy class with Bobby Wallace um, if, if you want to if you want to sort of venture out of your comfort zone uh, into something more performative. Um, any other questions? And once again I, I put that link in the chat. Um, I'm going to follow up with an email to all of you who registered for this uh, session. We'll all have links to all of our classes and this info session, if you want to come back again and, and sort of hear about our other classes on Thursday. Um, but also in the chat, I'm, I'm dropping the, the link to the general continuing education page that has all of the visual narrative classes. So Laura's class, Claudia's classes, um, 
the other classes we'll be presenting, uh, you know, on Thursday, and then specifically for the Rezo Lab, um, on our site we actually have all of our our own classes sort of curated into um, and grouped together. But those actually just link to the visual narrative page. So all those, you know, it's just going to take you directly to the sign up link. Um, so yeah, um, thank you all for for you know coming out tonight and for for being here for this uh you know latest info session probably like the god it's been eight years so this maybe is the 24th 25th info session that i've, I've hosted um you know as you can as you can see every time the formula changes a bit you know maybe we'll have we'll have a, a, an in-person event in the in the early spring winter spring semester in addition to these online classes um because that's always nice to see the space and check out the view. Um, but yeah, if anybody has any last minute questions before we call it a night, last call. All right, see you, Lisa, um, at the at the next session. Um, okay, all right. Well, thank you, thank you all, um, and. Uh, and you know, uh, hopefully, we'll see you either in person or um, at the next info session or online in one of our online classes. Um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to us after the event. You can email me. You all got an email with the link, so you can uh, you can email me uh, for a follow up, and I'll also include all the links and um, and the contacts of our of our faculty. So, thank you all. Have a great night, and uh, and we hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks a lot.